In this video, we're going to see some examples of writing functions in Java. So to start off with, any Java program has to have a main method. I'll use the term function and method interchangeably, so when I say one or the other, know that that's what I'm talking about. We declare our main method to be public, meaning anybody can run it, static, void, main, and it takes as a parameter a string array of arguments. And I'm going to declare a, an integer array. And I'll go ahead and initialize that. And I'm going to create two functions. So one of the ways to design your program would be from the top down. So using this technique, if I wanted to, for example, print the numbers Up to, up to let's say 10. Well, the easy way to do that would be to call a function called print numbers up to and pass that 10. Now you'll notice I get an error message. The method print numbers up to 10 is undefined. Well, that's unfortunate because that would certainly be great if I could just call a method numbers up to 10 and then my code works. And then coming down further, If I wanted to, let's say, print the sum of the array, uh, certainly I could do a for loop and go through it all, all but it would be even better to say, I'm going to call a function called sum array, and I'll pass nums to it. And then this will add up all the numbers in that array whatever array I pass to it, and return that number. Again, so then I don't have to do a whole lot of work. Now you'll notice this is a very easy to understand program. I'm printing the numbers up. I'm printing a line. I'm printing the numbers up to 10. I'm printing some stuff, and then I'm one of those things I'm printing here is, this, is the sum of the array nums. The bad news is I don't have these functions. The good news is I'm a programmer, so I can write the functions I need. And let's do that now. So let's do print numbers first, or print numbers up to. And that'll take an integer parameter, n. And you may notice that here I used underscores between words, whereas for summary I used camel case. Uh, part of that's because I use a lot of different programming languages that have different conventions for naming things. So um, we, we could certainly call this print numbers up to in camel case. There's nothing magical about that. It's all an identifier. So if I want to print the numbers up to n, I'm going to need a for loop. And I'm going to start at 1. And ii is going to be less than or equal to the number I'm printing up to. And I'll increment ii. And then I'll, I'll print ii plus I'll add a space. And that's just to keep those numbers separate. And I will have an extra space at the end of the line, but I don't have to worry about that because it'll be at the end of the line. No one will care. And then once I'm done, I'll do a new line. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do that. And the reason is, is what if someone wanted to print these numbers as part of their sentence, adding a print new line? will sort of uh, mess up the ability and the and the flexibility of this function. So I'm actually not going to do that. And instead, I'll even make this a print. And then I'll put the print line there. This may seem weird. Why not just put it here? Because I'm almost always going to want that. But the key is I'm almost always going to want that. And I want this to be as useful in as many situations as possible. So when you're writing methods, it's always a good idea to think about reducing the amount of output they have. Now this method is called print numbers up to n. So it's going to need to print at least those numbers. However, I don't need to say, come in here and, and do something like, okay, starting print numbers up to 10 and then 
then here, okay, I'm done, print returning. Um, nobody wants to see that, right, uh, who's using this function. So it's best to minimize the amount of output you have in your code. So that's my first function. And let's test to see that that works because again, you don't want to have a lot of code that doesn't work. So yeah, and my warning here is that I'm not using it, which I know, so that's fine. And so put the numbers up to 10 and that looks like it works. Okay, good. So now let's focus on the second method that I want to write called sum array. Now notice this, I'm using it as a value. I expect this to return a value. So it's going to return a static int. And it's going to take an integer array as a value. Now, it doesn't matter what this is called. This can be called anything. Uh, no big deal. Uh, I could call it nums if I wanted to. But it has nothing to do with this name because they're completely separate. What's going to happen is when I call this method here, it's going to pass a reference to nums here. And whenever I use numbers up here, it'll actually be referring to this array. So I'm going to declare a variable called sum. I'll initialize it to zero, and then I'll return that. And notice as soon as I type that line, that error goes away. That was because I wasn't returning an int. And I'm saying here in my method signature that, well, I'm returning an int. So it wants that, or else I'll get an error. OK, so that, again, we're going to type yet another for loop. Uh, we'll see in a few classes how we can not have to type quite so much stuff here. So sum is going to be equal to sum plus the value at numbers index ii. And that should complete our code. So now when we run this, we see we printed the numbers, we knew that that worked, and then the sum of the array is 55, and that's the sum of the numbers from 1 to 10, so that's also correct. I'll add some comments to what's going on here. One other thing to mention is you'll notice that these are all static. The reason they're static is because I'm, they're being defined in a class that doesn't have any data members, and so I'm not going to ever instantiate an object of functions. So I can't have non-static methods in my class. So that's static. Uh, main is always static because it gets run without being an object being instantiated. And of course, since I'm calling these from main, they also have to be static. If I put these in a different class, it's possible to define them to not be static. But in that case, I would need to instantiate an object of that class in order to get them to run. I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to get to here. So uh, I will add some comments, and um, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to write functions in Java.